right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to yet another piece of Bronx Stories. Before we start, kindly consider to leave us a like, a comment, and do not forget to subscribe. It has been 21 days since the president of Haiti was assassinated and later on laid to rest on the 23rd of July 2021. Every passing day, investigations into his death reveal new shocking details. Earlier investigations and statements made by the First Lady created a picture of the President having been riddled with 12 bullets by the assassins who she said did not give him a chance to say a word. This however does not seem to be the case as autopsy conducted on the late President's body seems to suggest that he was not only shot to death but was also mercilessly tortured prior to being put out of action. That right there brings a whole new perspective to this story. If the foreign mercenaries were sent to kill the president, why would they want to torture him first? Secondly, how on earth did they have the luxury of time to torture such a protected man before they could put him out of action? Where was the president's security during this whole time when the torture was conducted and later on the actual killing by shooting Done. We all know that torture is usually an indication of the tormentor's desire to teach his or her victim a lesson. An assassin does not have time for all that, as their interest is usually to take out their target as first as possible. So how come these assassins had the time to carry out a torture? The torture looks like someone wanted to get information out of a criminal or some sort of terrorist who had refused to speak or snitch on his accomplices and by the look of things it seems like whoever tortured the late president probably didn't get out of him the information he or she wanted. Sources both in and outside Haiti have shown the autopsy pictures of the president that cannot be shared on YouTube because of their gruesome nature and all these pictures clearly show that the president was tortured and not just shot as indicated earlier on by reports and the statements made by the First Lady. It has also been said that one of his eyes was actually gawked out. One of his eyes was literally blacked out of his socket. His eye was literally pulled out of its socket. The First Lady who was present during this ordeal seems to have withheld some information, some facts of how the President was killed. Could it be that someone warned her against speaking out certain things or saying the truth lest she would be next in the line of fire? We don't know, but again, if it was a normal assassination, why would anyone try to cover it up? The first lady said that the president died from the very first bullet and did not know why. She did not understand why they would go on to pump his lifeless body with an extra 11 bullets despite the first bullet taking him out. Now, if he was killed by the first bullet, would the assassins go ahead to torture his already lifeless body? Tell me what you think. Tell me what is your opinion, what you think. Why would a killer put you out of action and go ahead to torture your lifely, lifeless body? Go ahead to mutilate your lifeless body? It seems to me like this is a person that's likely to do that prior to killing you so that they can inflict the pain on you as you go down. Observing the pictures of the autopsy report as seen in the WhatsApp chat room of Softflow TV on YouTube, there is no doubt that the president had bullet wounds, but what is clear also is that he had cut marks on his body. He was also burned. He had burn wounds that were akin to burns caused by melting plastic on somebody's body. Imagine someone lights a piece of plastic and uh, drops it on your body as it burns. That must have been super painful. Oh my goodness. I cannot imagine what this gentleman went through before he finally breathed his last. Pictures reveal that there were also broken bones and to be specific, the president had an arm and leg broken. Now. An assassin, in my opinion, does not have time for all this torture. 
breaking limbs, breaking the leg, breaking the arm. This is clearly somebody that was doing this before the prison died. You know, we've watched a lot of horror stories or a lot of uh, uh, documentaries about a murder and a killing and people only do some of this mutilation when they are trying an attempt to hide evidence. But these people that didn't go to that extent really had no reason of inflicting further wounds on the already dead body of the president. It is also seen that the president had a crack on the skull and a closer examination of the skull shows that this must have been blunt force that was caused by a gun butt. The president must have been hit hard by the barrel or the butt of a gun right on the forehead that left a severe crack that would probably not even give him a chance to live had they not even shot him. This goes without saying that remember they also removed his left eye. So what kind of assassination is this? Where the assassins have the time to go out your eyes, they have the time to break your limbs, they have the time to burn you with whatever material they have access to, they have the time to hit you with the gun butts and all that. Clearly this is a clear indication of people that were not just out to finish the gentleman off but out to teach him a lesson, out to show him who they were. So in my mind I have no doubt that looking at these pictures this gentleman was terribly tortured before he was finally shot dead. I don't know what you think if you have an opportunity to see the pictures or if you have seen them pictures kindly let me know what you think. Tell me what your observations have been. Additionally, the president of the president has not only police security and the military, but they also have a proper CCTV system around the property. The footage of this CCTV has not been released to the public yet, but it was on and they captured all the events that took place in the president's house on that fateful night. No one is talking about the high-ranking officials that the president called but failed to respond to his cries. And these people criminally liable for anything? They failed to protect the first citizen and the first family that is ordinarily the most protected across the world. Every country I've heard about, the people that have given priority as far as security is concerned is usually the president, the family, and the royal family. So you can imagine if these people were unable to respond to the cries of a person of that caliber. What about the common Haitian people assuming this indeed was an assassination? Clearly it does not seem to be the case. There is also a high likelihood that his eye was removed and the rest of the injuries inflicted on him were done while he was still alive. So was to make his death as slow and as painful as it could get. Could the manner of his death be an explanation to why his security details disappeared? Oh, come to think about it, they probably did not disappear as we are presuming, but were probably taking part in the killing, who knows? Or probably they excused the killers to carry out their mission unhindered. It is also said that the president's private residence has a safe house, but it did not help him. Okay, come to think about it. I don't have any military training or any training as far as security is concerned, but out of common sense, I believe the moment gunshots were heard outside the president's residence, the first thing the security details would have done was to rush the president to a safe place in the house. And in this case, the safe place is definitely the safe house. But that did not happen. Assuming the president security team was working together with the assassins, then clearly the president had no way of his saving himself because he was literally under attack right from inside the house and outside the house. No one in the house could have given him any sort of protection and no one outside the house could have given him any sort of protection. So even the safe house in this case, was not accessible to him because the enemies were right inside the house and they were also outside the house. So for that reason, even the safe house did not come to his aid. As the mystery surrounding his death continues, a number of people have been arrested, some American citizens with roots from Haiti. 
we shall keep watching and bringing you the story as it unfolds. As for now, may his soul rest in peace and we can only hope that the truth shall come to light and that the perpetrators shall be brought to book. Kindly let me put across this disclaimer that we are not trying to point fingers at anybody. We are not pointing fingers at the president's family. We are not pointing fingers at the first lady. We are not pointing fingers at the security details. But one thing that we can all agree on is that people, the people of Haiti, have questions that must be answered. And that someone inside is trying to cover up something because the whole story does not seem to add up. So we can only wait and see what happens next. Thank you for watching this far and kindly do not forget to subscribe, like and leave a comment. Bye bye for now and see you in the next one. Adios.